Welcome to Alula. Thanks for joining in part two of this incredible journey around Medina province in Saudi Arabia. Yesterday, we were lucky enough to head up to Al Kaba and we even climbed one of the volcanoes there. They've got a huge sprawling black and white volcano field, which was absolutely magnificent. And I'll leave a link here so that you can check out that video if you wish. But today and tomorrow, we've got two days to explore the burgeoning tourist destination of Al Ula. It's really taken off in the past few years and it's now home to numerous festivals. I don't just mean music, I mean arts, culture, landscape, geography, geology. You can even go to the tombs of the Nabataean people. This is the same tribe who created Petra in Jordan and we'll be heading there later to the site called Hegra where they've arranged a really special after dark experience. I cannot wait. This is my second time now to Alula. I don't often go to the same place twice, but I really enjoyed my time last year and I can't wait to show you some of the things that have made me so drawn to this place. This is one of the amazing canyons full of these incredible rock structures you can expect to find here. We're staying in the Sahari Resort, see here, <laughs> and we've got some epic things lined up this weekend, so stay tuned. We've got a hike through one of the canyons, with the iconic rock structures. We're heading into the Old Town to check out the Old Town Village, the Oasis area, as well as Jadida, which is an old marketplace. Um, it really comes alive at night, and it was one of my favorite places to visit last year. In the afternoon, we'll be doing a heritage tour and in the evening going to Hegra to view the Nabataean tombs at night. <laughs> we'll be checking out some of the amazing rock structures. Keep a look out for Elephant Rock, it's incredible. And we're hoping to catch a glimpse of the Mariah Concert Hall, which has played host to some really big names in music. But that's enough talking, let's get on with it. Since tourism visas were available from a few years ago, this area has become really popular amongst international guests and amongst locals. There are so many hikes that you can do in Alula, and we are doing one that's around the accommodation we're staying in, which is called Sahari. This is now my second time in Alala. I loved it so much after coming last year. The beauty of Alala is centered around these remarkable rock structures that you can see around me. And the Royal Commission of Alala, who govern all of the tourism behind these activities and events, have done a remarkable job in developing the area as one of Saudi's premier tourist destinations. The great thing about Sahari Resort is that it's so quiet in the evening. When we flew to Medina, it was so loud all through the night, um, people walking around, but here it's still, it's dead quiet. It's so easy to sleep. What a dream. <laughs> We've just arrived at Elephant Rock, which is one of the major tourist attractions in Alula. And it's not hard to guess why. Elephant Rock has developed considerably since it was opened. And in the evenings it's open for snacks and beverages, and some booths to enjoy a nice view over the rock. Elephant Rock is particularly good at sunrise and sunset for photography. Last time we were here, we took some really fun pictures on a wide angle. So make sure to head down in the evening for some special shots. So we just made it through the little checkpoint, entering into the 
region in Alula, that's home to some of its most fine dining restaurants and also to the Mariah Concert Hall, which is where a lot of the big acts come to perform. Uh, there's also a really lovely restaurant there called Mariah Social. The Mariah Concert Hall is an incredible building. It's basically a huge mirrored building. So you'll see all of the rocks surrounding in the canyon around it reflected in the walls of the building. The trouble is that while this is magnificent at night, if you want to get some daytime videos and pictures, it's very difficult to actually enter. So you need to have a ticket to one of the restaurants in the region. The minimum spend is 200 sar. You need to show a ticket at the checkpoint to be able to we are at the entrance to Habitat's Resort and we're going to head on in for lunch at Main Shell Restaurant. Not quite what I was expecting for lunch, but this is definitely one delicious acai bowl. So we finished up now at Habitas and we're going to continue our journey with hopefully some special pictures at the Mariah Concert Hall. Behind me you can see the magnificent Mariah building. It's just absolutely magnificent. I've never seen it in the daytime before. And look at it just mirroring everything else around it. This is the world's largest mirrored building and it's played host to some really spectacular acts in the past in the Mariah Concert Hall. This includes Alicia Keys, Jamiroquai, Andre Bocelli, Craig David, Lionel Richie, the list goes on. But you can see why you would want to come to a concert here. It's in a really remote and rural part of Saudi Arabia and this is the stunning backdrop. I'm so glad I could come to the building during the daytime and I'd highly recommend coming along. Even if you can't see a concert, the building is worth it as well. skates on now trying to get to the old town tour by 3 30 and now walking through the old Al Jadida district this is the place that comes alive in the evening there's lots of market stalls music food restaurants so looking forward to getting back here a bit later but for now let's go check out the old town Inside Jadida, the Old Town Central District, you can actually see some of the old mud houses and mud brick homes just by walking through. tours and we are here just prior to our Hegra at night tour. There's a lot of fast food style joints along here, Dunkin Donuts, Burger King, some Dunnies. Okay so we've arrived at Winter Park with plenty of time. Behind me you can see the bus that's going to take us through to Hegra and this is for the Hegra by night experience in Alula.
at every stop I'm gonna start explaining first in Arabic sure. and then after that I'm gonna repeat everything in English so don't worry you will not miss anything <laughs> in this uh, tour we're gonna visit three stops and we're gonna learn more about the area that we are in it now and then we're gonna continue to the next place called Al Khremat and we're gonna start a waking your senses activity at that place. Hope you enjoy the tour and uh, let's go to the first point. Behind me is a rock wall that's the highest place in Hegra and there's some ancient inscriptions which show how valuable this place was two to three thousand years ago. These are the caravans, the camels, the caravans, they're all part of the spice route that passed through Yemen and on the way to the Arabian Peninsula. So far this trip is amazing, we've got a wonderful Rawi, which is the word for storyteller. So we've been hearing some interesting facts about Hegra, and at the moment we've been able to see a few of the incredible inscriptions that date two to three thousand years ago. The eagle is uh, the symbol of the Nabataean god, and because the Nabataeans believe that their god landed from the sky in the shape of an eagle, and landed on top of a mountain called Chara Mountain, and it's in Jordan. And this is why they shaped it after an eagle and called it the Shara. But luckily for us, there's still one tomb that still have one eagle that still have its own head. And by the way, you are going to it, you're gonna see it. <laughs> and uh, the only way to access that tomb is with this ticket that you oh, bought. Okay. And if you wanna see the tomb, it's the last one to the left. Final part of the Hegra by night tour, we were treated to a horse and carriage ride to the final destination. This amazing tomb lit up in so many different lights. It's absolutely exquisite. to the Al Jadida district to get some food and it's so much more vibrant now everyone is about walking around lots of people out and about yep, yep, yep. this area is full of small little alleyways so you can just snake your way around and find a good place that you'd like to stop and rest last time we were here we found a lovely little restaurant called Socolo and we're going to find that one to return to
Good morning from the Alula hot air balloon site. A 5 a.m. wake up call has paid off and it's now 6 a.m. we've driven to the site. Can't wait to get out there. We're one of the first people here. <laughs> it's freezing. You can hear the baskets for the hot air balloons being dragged out to the site. Obviously, we can't control where the balloon takes us, but we're hoping for a gust of wind that will take us over the Hegra or Maranzala Nabataean archaeological site so that we can see some of the tombs from above. This is such a wonderful activity to do in our Lula. So let's get in there. I cannot wait to get up. <laughs> Coffee, ready to go for my hot air balloon flight. All of our pilots today are from the Netherlands and we've got four balloons going up and there's eight people. So we've hit a stroke of luck and managed to get a private balloon flight here in Alula, which is absolutely amazing. And the other really exciting thing is that the wind direction is blowing across to Maranzala. So there is a high chance our balloon will be heading over the Hegra tombs, which I cannot wait for. Last year, we didn't quite get so lucky and we went off in the other direction. Perfect landing. Our chaser has found us. Coming along to collect us from a random landing site. <laughs> Here we are in a paddock in between the rocks. I just received my certificate to say that I've ascended into the Alula skies. What a fantastic trip today. Wonderful pilot and expert landing. Sadly, this is the last activity on our trip in Alula. It's been such an amazing time. Really enjoyed my second trip here now and now back to the airport. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, then please hit the subscribe button. See you next time.